it will give you a variant options what type of link you need data ethernet atm manual fast ethernet ethernet serial for my scenario i'm going to use normal fast ethernet click on the fast ethernet click on the first router click on the second router done now both routers are connected if i want to exit from this mode i have to click on this icon after adding the link and using the topology summary we can see which port is connected to the other router for this scenario fast ethernet 00 in head office 1 is connected to fast ethernet 00 in branch 1 it will help us while we are configuring these interfaces in both routers there is another way to know these interfaces which interface is connected to the other one there is an icon here called show interface name if we click on this icon it will show us the interface names on our network design if we want to add more information there is a note icon here we can use this add a note icon to add IP addresses or any notes we want to our network in my scenario I'm going to add the IP addresses for head office 1 router and branch 1 click on the icon click 192.168.101.30 where the other router is 192.168.2.30 we can drag it anywhere we want it's easy After preparing our lab, we want to run the routers. To start a router, we have to right click on the router icon and click start. To check the status of the router, in our right side under topology summary area, if the icon is green beside the router name, that means the router is on. And obviously, if the icon is red, that means the router is not working. In our case currently, head office router is working. Now we want to connect to the router via a console. To make this happen, we have to right click on the router icon and click console. While it's loading the iOS, I want to show you my CPU utilization status. As we can see here, the, use, the CPU utilization is very high. We will do a workaround to decrease the process utilization. There is an option in GNS called Ideal PC. It's used to tell the machine that this is the ideal case for our router. We have to set a value for it. To do that, we have to wait first until the router is loaded. Now, okay, the router is loaded. To set a value for the ideal PC, we have to right click on the icon, click ideal PC. Now it's calculating the values. As we see here, there are variant options. The good thing about GNS, it is recommending or suggesting a value, the best value that match our scenario. It add an asterisk, small asterisk beside before the number. GNS is recommending to choose this value. In our case, we have to choose it. Click OK. Now it's applied. If we check our CPU, Utilization, we will see that it's drop down, which is what we want. Now we have to do the same thing for the other router. We have to start the router, wait until it's started. Now it's started. We have to connect via console. It's putting up the image. This is our head office router. Now the second router is ready.
Now we have access for both routers. We are ready to go for the next step. We want to ensure that they are able to communicate between each other and we want to configure fast Ethernet 00 in both sides. To do that, let's go to enable, configure terminal, interface fast Ethernet 00, IP address. And we have to assign the subnet mask slash 30 that means 255.255.255.252 description it's a useful command it will help us later on if we want to check this interface to where it's connected to branch 1 now shut down to ensure that it's not shut down On the other side, before we configure the interface, we need to check the status of the interfaces. Show IP interface brief. As we notice here that it is down, down, administratively down, that means it's not yet configured. Go to configure mode. Inter interface fast Ethernet 00. zero. IP address 192.168.12 Subnet mask 255.255.255.252 Description To head office And last but not the least, no shutdown Now if we want to check the status of IP interfaces We can see that the fast Ethernet 00 IP is 192.168.1.2 status is up and protocol is up. Let us check the other router. Also, it's up up. If we want to ensure that they are able to communicate between each other, let's try to bring the other router from this router. Let's repeat it again for 50 times. As we can see here that we are able to bring the other router to ensure that we are bringing the other one we have to check the interface I do prefer to clear the counters before we check it to ensure that it's coming from the other router clear counters now we will repeat the bank for 50 times again show interface as we can see that this interface received 50 buckets if we want to bring another 50 yes this router the second router which is for branch one it received 100 buckets now let me close the consoles before we close, we have to ensure that we save the NVRAM by entering copy. It will ask a uh, destination name, make the default. Now configuration has been saved from NVRAM to flash. So next time whenever we switch on this router, the configuration will not be lost. Close the router. In this lesson, we gave you a brief information about GNS3. We discussed how to download and install the program. We had tested Dynamics to ensure that it's working. We had added several iOS images to our program. We had created a small lab and tested the connectivity between two routers and discussed how to decrease the CPU utilization while we are using GNS3. Later on, we will discuss how to use SDM, how to connect the routers to the internet, and how to connect GNSA3 to VMware. For more tutorials and discussion, please visit our website, grok.net. Thank you very much.